Hello, hello. What's going on, everybody? This is Tylen with the Uniswap Foundation again, and I'm here to dive into the code that we just looked at from the V4 template and see it live in action now. Now, as we talked about in our code on the V4 template, we talked about all the things that encompass it in it. One of the main things was our templated hook contract, which we called the counter. And right now I'm gonna dive into the counter, how it basically functions, what the hooks look like, and then we're gonna go about actually deploying the counter to Gorelli as a hook contract, and then we're gonna plug that into a pool and deploy that pool on V4. So we've got a lot of fun moving parts here, and it's gonna be a lot that we're gonna learn. So get re let's get ready to dive in. So if we see here, we can see our counter hook contract. And as we mentioned, Hooks basically are items that can be activated on a pool so that whenever certain events happen on a pool, these actions are triggered that then call functions to start executing. And here we have a very simple implementation of that. The first thing you'll notice is all of these different hook calls. Essentially right now, as of this video, there are eight hook calls that you can do on V4. And the ones that we've set as true are the ones that we're gonna be actually creating functions for. So if we look, we have before and after modify position, that's when we're gonna have certain events happen, and before or after a swap. And the events that are going to, and the events that are going to be happening are pretty straightforward and simple. Essentially, every time a swap occurs or any time a position is modified, we're just gonna add one to our count there. So we're calling, we're counting every time one of these events happens. Now, this is a really simple implementation of a hook, but immediately you can see that the design space opens up so much for developers on Uniswap v4, and it's so exciting to see that on each of these action points, we're able to do something cool, unique, build out sophisticated, complex functions that people are really gonna enjoy and love, and we're already seeing people do that. So this right here is just a super basic implementation of how to do this, and it's built to be this way so that you can add on to it, tweak it, do all the things you want, but this is what a very simple hook contract looks like. Now that we know what this hook contract looks like, let's go to our next step, which is let's actually deploy this hook contract. And if we go here to this script, we actually have the script to deploy this on Gorelli. So if you see here, this is the actual V4 pool manager that we have deployed on Gorelli. And if you also look here, we have a create to deployer. Now, the reason why we need this is because we need the prefixes of the hook contract to actually be related to the hook flags that we're passing in because that's how the V4 mechanism actually looks at these contracts to understand which hooks are gonna be called on the pool. It's a way to save gas, and this way, um, it's actually, it, all this to say is it's actually implemented here in this script where we make it easy for you to find that address. So we have this hook miner, which actually finds the addresses that you need. So you don't have to go about thinking that. You could just actually switch this out after you have the hooks that you want modified, etc. And then this hook miner will find the address that you need for you. And essentially, that's pretty much all we need to do here. We've got our hook that we want to deploy. We've got the flags that we're looking for. And now what we can do is we can actually deploy this hook. The first thing I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna copy my script that I have here for deploying the counter contract. And sweet, so I've got it here. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna deploy it. I am passing in my RPC URL and my private key that I have set up uh, that you guys should also set up with your own environment variables. Obviously, I'm not showing mine uh, for simple reasons. So now what we're doing is we are finishing up the script execution. Boom, it's passing, it's finishing all it needs, and we're deploying this counter contract to Gorelli. And once we deploy that, I'm going to show you how we're gonna go actually get the contract address and we're gonna pull it and then we're gonna 
put it into our pool to create the the pool with our new counter hook. And cool. So if I see this, I it returns two transactions for me. The transaction that we're looking for is the second one with this hash. And now if I go and paste this into the Growerly testnet, I can see my contract right here. And I'm going to refresh this until it gives me the internal state here. Let me double check and make sure I got the right one. That should be the correct address, but let me see here. Or correct hash it might be this one. Okay, no, it is not. Okay, sweet. Okay, boom. We got our internal transactions here. So it was it was the second one. So if you're copying, copy the second one. And then we're gonna go to internal transactions. And this right here is actually our contract where the hook was deployed to. So we are going to copy this address. We're going to go back here. And now let's do the even more fun part. Now that we have our hook contract, we have our counter, we can actually set up our pool with this hook address so that this pool will go live with this contract on this testnet, not live on, on mainnet because that's not available yet, but on this testnet. And it is going to actually implement all the logic of this hook. So whenever a swap occurs, it'll count plus one, plus one after and before the swap and same with modifying liquidity. So I'm going to go over here to this pool create hook script and I am going to switch this hook address, which is just a previous hook address we had. And I just pasted in my new one. I'm going to now set whatever parameters I want for my pool. So if you're familiar with Uniswap before there only used to be certain things you could control which were the fee tiers. And these fee tiers were basically predetermined. You couldn't decide what fee tiers you wanted. And you could control what tokens you would create a pool with. Well, now you can not only control what kind of tokens you want to pair in this pool, but you also have your hooks here that you can add. And you can customize the swap fee to whatever you want. So here, I'm actually going to make the swap fee uh, really low, 1,000 bips. And I think that's like 1%. So... And I have my tick spacing set here. I'm not going to change that. But essentially now I have so much customizability over the pool. I've added this hook address. And let me remind you that now this hook address, if anyone ever wants to deploy a pool, a separate pool, whether it's like a, you know, ETH uni pool, they can use my same hook address that I've deployed. And they could use that hook address for them. It doesn't just have to be me, which is also freaking cool when it comes to creating hooks and having them deployed and having other people create pools with them in it. So I've got that set up. I've set up my pool here with my information that I need based on above. I have my starting price. I'm going to keep that as is the hook data, etc. And I also have, you know, I, I just console log my pool ID just to know what it is. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to call the pool manager and initialize my pool with all of this information. And once we do that, we're going to have a pool on testnet with our hook that we just deployed ready to go and add liquidity to do and do all the fun stuff we wanted to do. So I am going to now take my script again for deploying the hook on this pool. And we're going to pass this in. And also I have mock usdc and mock uni from a previous address but wait let's see here let's take a pause okay sweet let's give this one more try i think i didn't click save last time so we're gonna now create our pool with our hook and it's gonna all run and work beautifully because it should work beautifully <laughs> this time okay sweet and there we go so just remember to save your code and as this is happening we're now creating this pool with our hook that we just deployed, our counter hook, and it's a mock USDC, mock uni hook that has all of these hook functionalities now enabled. And if we see here, boom, we have our hash that it went through, and ta-da, you now have deployed your first Uniswap v4 pool on Gorelli testnet with a hook that you've created. So awesome, isn't it? Now you can go out, you can explore, you can create other hook functionalities, you can deploy these contracts, you can start testing with these pools, you can do everything you want. And we have all the scripts here in this V4 template for you to do it. I'm super excited for everyone to get started. 
I know that it's going to be really, really fun seeing all the hooks that people build. With that said, check out our next videos where we go through now adding liquidity to these pools and actually swapping on these pools and getting the tokens in return. As always, thank you guys for watching these videos. Hope you will subscribe. Enjoy the rest of y'all's days and lives. Stay blessed. See y'all soon. Bye.